everyone. We are going to get started in just one minute. Alrighty, I have seven o'clock on the dot, so I will get started. Thank you all for joining me tonight for the Bashi preseason webinar. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Kendall Zeslitz. I am the Special Olympics Maryland Bashi staff liaison. If you have any questions that pop up during tonight's webinar, please feel free to raise your hand um, with a little icon, or you can type a question into the questions pane. Because it is just me running this webinar tonight, I will be checking for questions once every couple of slides, so please bear with me during those pauses. The question is also being recorded, and I will make sure to send it out bright and early to you guys tomorrow morning so you have it as a point of reference. All right, jumping right in. So an important reminder, which I know that we share with every presentation that we give, but no athlete or volunteer they participate in any manner in the Special Olympics Maryland program without a valid and current medical form or a volunteer application. This is really just a safety precaution for us, and it includes not just your volunteers, but also your coaches, your assistant coaches, really anyone who comes out and helps out. So working with your area leadership, this is the best way to stay on top of forms being submitted and everything. So your area leadership should be in regular communication with you if you have athletes that are registered that are missing a medical, um, just work connect with them and make sure that you are all on top of it. It's for the health and safety of our athletes, which is one of the most important things to us. So the registration deadlines for the 2019 Summer Games, which are right around the corner. So we have our first deadline coming up on April 25th. This is going to be your training registration deadline. So this is when your rosters of all the athletes, things like partners, coaches, and volunteers who are participating in your program needs to be listed into GMS. Most counties have someone who handles the GMS work um, for the entire county. So connect with your area leadership and find out who that individual is and make sure to submit it to them a few days in advance just so it's not on the final day and they have to rush to get it in. Our second deadline that we have is going to be on May 6th. This is the last date for missing forms to be submitted to Special Olympics Maryland headquarters. So all forms for this season need to be valid through the last day of summer games, which is gonna be June 9th this year. So all athletes need to have their complete medical form. All coaches, partners, volunteers have to have their volunteer application and their protective behaviors, concussion certificate, and for head coaches, it's sports certification. Um, the competition registration date quickly follows after that, and that is going to be on May 16th. That is when everyone who is registered in GMS from your delegation needs to be entered into their event. If they are not in an event, um, say on May 17th, then they are going to be deleted out of summer use and will be unable to participate. The Bocce location for 2019, so I'm sure a lot of you are aware that Towson is doing construction on our soccer field that really turned into a moon bounce last year. Um, so we are currently looking for a new location. We have a few possibilities right now. Um, so once we have those details nailed down, I will make sure to send them out to you so you and your families and your athletes can be as prepared as possible. Bocce entries and entry process. So to be eligible to compete at summer games, all players have to compete in a minimum of two qualifying competitions. Um, they can compete in singles or doubles at the competition, and that can let them enter into anything at summer games. So if they go to two different competitions and they do doubles at both of those, but they want to do singles and four-person teams at summer games, that is totally fine. We can make that happen. Um, we just want to make sure they're getting those two competition opportunities. Also, I encourage all of you to go above and beyond with the amount of competition that your athletes attend during the season. It really only makes them a better player and it kind of builds 
team morale and everything if you send them to multiple competitions. If you have any special needs or circumstances, make sure you inform your area's GMS manager so it can be properly recorded in GMS. Also, please have your team's head coach send me a little note, just that way we can make sure all of the officials and everyone at Summer Games are as prepared as possible. Or if you're attending, say, Anne Arundel Spring Games, I can let them know what your special needs or circumstances so everyone is just in the loop and things will flow smoothly. So the events that we have at Summer Games are singles, doubles, unified doubles, and team and unified team. So you'll notice that team and unified team is asterisk. We are really building on our BOSU population, which is fantastic. It's such a great score and it's awesome to see it grow. Um, but we only have so much space at Summer Games. It's not an issue for this year or even next year, but we just want to prepare for the future and we want to allow as many people as possible to come out and to compete and really get to experience what Summer Games is all about. So that is why I'm kind of pushing having team and unified team. I know we always offer it at the state Summer Games, but no one ever signs up for it. It's really a great way to play bocce. It builds a lot of teamwork and it's really strong in our interscholastic unified sports program through high schools. So if you have any interest in teams or you want to know some more information, please just send me an email or give me a call after the webinar or tomorrow, and I would love to talk to you more about it. At Summer Games this year, athletes are able to enter into two events. They can do singles, and they can do doubles, or they can do a four-person team. If you have a unified partner, they can only do one event, so they can either do unified doubles or unified four-person team. All right, so our currently scheduled bocce qualifying competition, this is actually an increase by two competitions from what we had scheduled this time last year, which is fantastic. So as you can see, we're going to start off bocce season in Washington, Anne Arundel, and Baltimore City. And we have our last one scheduled right now as May 18th, but again, it's in Baltimore City. So what I would really like to challenge every program to do is to host a competition um, this year. It can be as large or as small as you would like it to be. We just really want to enhance the number of opportunities that we have for athletes. Like I said before, it helps them grow as stronger players. And it's just really good to get them out there on the weekends and make sure they really understand the game of bocce. And it's a lot of fun. It provides a great weekend activity. So the more competitions we can have, the merrier. If your county is interested in hosting a competition, please let me know um, and we can make sure they get it on the schedule. All right, I'm just going to pause really quick to see if I have any students raised or any questions. Doesn't look like any so far. Great. Um, head coach requirements. So I'm actually going to jump ahead to the next slide. So oh, actually, John Zaffi, I see you have your hand raised. So I'm going to unmute your line. You should be unmuted, John. Um, I was just going to say Montgomery County will have a qualifier. We just haven't set the format yet. Yeah. Awesome, great, thanks so much. So once you guys set the date, if you could just let me know, that would be fantastic. All right, so the coach education and development um, progression. So we have kind of switched this up a little bit within the past few months. I'm sure you guys saw my novel of an email that I sent out all about it. And your area leadership should also be moving forward with having you all trained this way. So just to be a general volunteer, um, nothing really changes. The next step up would be a sport volunteer. So someone who's building as a part of your delegation for bocce to summer games, they're going to be considered a sport volunteer. So what is different from just being a general volunteer is they also need to take that concussion course. Um, so if you have a sport coordinator for your county too who handles everything to do with bocce, they have to also take this concussion course. To be an assistant coach, you have to do all the things for sport volunteers, but you also have to take either the coaching special and fixed athletes general course or the unified specific one coaching unified sports. To be a head coach, you have to do everything within the assistant coach and you also have to do that sport specific course. So that's either the in-person trainings that we have. We have one coming up on Thursday in Baltimore City and we have one on March 28th out in Washington County or you can do the online option um, with Renny Springell who filmed that video for us and then we have the follow-up quiz. So all of those things would satisfy that sport specific course that's needed to be a head coach. And if you have a strong desire to become an advanced coach, you just do everything 
in the blue head coach column and you add in the principles of coaching course. For renewing your volunteering coach certification, so your volunteer application, protected behaviors, concussion, those are all going to be the same thing. Um, you need to do your sports specific course every six years and you need to do an improved education and development opportunity every three years. So I will talk a little bit more about that in one of these next few slides. All uh, right, Kendall, so this is just... Um, Kendall, this yeah. is Mike. I, I just wanna give credit to Janet Laramore. Uh, Janet took the uh, content we shared in our um, review of the coach education system and she's the one who created that diagram uh, and that layout so uh, those of you who know janet uh, and if you find this helpful just be sure to thank her thanks yes thank you janet because this is beautiful and very easy to look at um, this is just a list of everyone that we had in 2018 um, bachi listed in as a head coach or a assistant coach so if you are scrolling through this and you don't see your name on here, don't panic. Um, just send me a quick email and we can get down to the bottom of it. I know some people were entered into training last year as a unified partner when really they were a coach and they were playing as a unified partner. So we can find out what your certification status is. Just give me a shout and I am here to help you with that. Right, so coach trainings, we have our new Special Olympics Maryland coach research page that has really everything that you guys can need as coaches. Um, there's a separate page for coach education, which is going to include um, different coach education opportunities that may not be sports specific, like an in-person training or a webinar training. We also have resource pages for every sport that's happening at Summer Games. So I will send these slides out tomorrow. You can click this link and see what we have on there. We currently have the rules, the coaching guide, all the upcoming competitions, a little bit of information on summer games, and these slides and the recording will also be posted on there. So it's a great resource to have. I recommend sending it out to families, to your assistant coaches who may not be on the webinar tonight, because a lot of questions that may come to you could be answered through this page. All right, so online training, these are some of the courses that we offer to um, renew your certification. So there is not a Vashi specific training, but you can see down at the bottom, we have an entire general section. So that coaching Special Olympics athletes course is there. It first cost about $16.95 to the individual who's taking it, but um, Special Olympics Maryland will reimburse the entire price of that course. You also see we have the coaching, principles course, um, all different things that you guys could use as a way to um, recertify yourself. So what is an improved course or development experience? The two easiest ones are gonna be your live in-person training and then your online training via webinar that has the follow-up quiz because Bocce doesn't have a national governing body um, we don't have access to online or live courses through them or through uh, the National Federation of State High School Association. So really the best way to do it, I always recommend attending the in-person trainings just because I'm a very in-person visual learner, um, but doing our online training is great as well. We are also looking to offer a master coach online learning session. Um, so more information to come on that. We may do it halfway through the season or just decide to start fresh with the 2020 season for that one. Um, some ways that you can renew your coaching in general are doing the coaching Special Olympics athletes course, principles of coaching, unified sports, just sort of the first aid course from the approved provider, um, that could count as well. We are really flexible um, with how you guys can get recertified. So if you have any questions or any ideas that may be a little bit more out of the box, send them our way because we would love to build on the opportunities that we have for all of you. All right, give me one second while I just look and make sure no one else's hands are raised. All right, Beth Greenberg, um, I just unmuted your line, Beth, so I believe you're self muted. If you want to unmute yourself, then you can ask your question. Beth, if you... Oh, there we go. There go. I got it. Um, I wanted <laughs> to know, coaching the Special Olympic athlete, how often how long does that certification last the coaching special olympics athletes mike and please correct me if i'm wrong um 
you just have to do that at one point in your time within the sport, but you could always use that to renew your sport specific certification every three years. So if you have not okay. taken that course before and you're I took it in a sport stadium. Okay. Great. Then you should be good to go on that one. Okay. All right. Thank you. I'm muting myself again. All right. Thanks, Beth. These next few slides um, just jump over our coaches' code of conduct. So it's a lot of different bullet points. So when I send this out, please just read quickly through it and disperse it to all of your assistant coaches. I'll just highlight some of um, the segments that we have. So having respect for others, your athletes, your uniform partners, your other coaches, parents, spectators, ensuring a positive experience. That is what Special Olympics is all about. We want our athletes to come in and have a great time, whether it's at practice, whether it's at a local competition or whether it's at summer games. Acting professionally and taking responsibility for my actions. So this is important in pretty much every aspect in life. Um, also our athletes are looking up to their coaches. You guys are their role models. So the way that you act is the way that they are going to act. So just making sure that you take into account all these different bullets. Quality service to the athletes and unified partners. So the athletes are the reason that we are all here. Whether if you're a child of an athlete or if you have zero connections to Special Olympics Maryland, you just decided you want to coach one day, we are here for the athletes as well as the unified partners. Um, so just really being prepared and having their best interests at heart. Health and safety of the athletes and unified partners. I don't think that one really needs an explanation. It's pretty straightforward. All right. So... Coaching. Um, only competing athletes, unified partners, and designated volunteers are allowed on the courts. Coaches, you are not permitted on the courts. You need to stay um, back. This year at Summer Games, we're going to have a very clearly marked um, spectator section, so you need to remain behind those spectator section lines. Once the official clock has started, no coaching or instructional assistance is permitted. This rule doesn't just apply to you coaches. It also applies to your parents. So please make sure to share this with them prior to summer games. Teammates are allowed to confer with one another prior to stepping onto the court. It's just, if they are mid throw, the other teammate can't say, oh, nope, aim a little bit more to the left. So you train your athletes all season. It is really their time to show off all of the stuff that they have learned. So just give them that opportunity. All right. So if no one has a hand raised, I'm going to jump to a supplement that we have that just kind of is a highlight of bocce rules. Um, so we already went over the events that we offer. Um, one thing to highlight is that we do have half court singles. I know we have a few counties who still participate in this. Um, so the half court singles, it's exactly half of the court. The athletes are going to throw from where this yellow line is. So it's right at the mid mark, so 30 feet. And they are going to throw towards the end board. Um, the rules are essentially the same as they would be for uh, full court bocce. It's just there is no longer uh, an initial um, foot fault line. If the three attempt rule needs to be employed in half court bocce, the polina is going to be placed 40 feet from the throwing line in the center of the court. So it's equidistant from each of the sidelines. Um, other than that, half court game plays according to the rest of our Special Olympics Maryland rules. For equipment, um, we use the green and red bocce balls, and the polina will be either yellow or white at your local competitions. If this differs, that is totally fine. But what we utilize at summer games are these colors. Um, another thing that I really want to highlight is the usage of ramps. So I know last year at Summer Games, we had the ramp set up as kind of a demonstration for you and your athletes to check out. We really want to push um, using ramps over the lighter weight balls, um, just because the lighter weight balls are considered a competitive disadvantage because of the density of regulation balls. Athletes who have historically using lighter weight balls in the past are still able to do so, or if you have a new athlete who comes on board who really can't play bocce without it, that is fine. Just make sure that you let me know so we can have it approved um, come summer games time. Athletes are not going to be divisioned exclusively and will be competing based solely on their divisioning score. 
So if you have an athlete who is using a ramp, just because they're using that ramp doesn't mean that they will automatically be divisioned along with everybody else. And same with these things, an athlete who is utilizing lighter weight balls, they will be divisioned amongst everyone, not just the other individuals who use the lighter weight balls. For ramps, I know looking online, some of them seem pretty expensive. You can get so creative with ramps. I've seen them through the school systems where they're made out of thinner PVC piping. I saw an athlete this year even utilize, using a wheelchair, and he used his legs as a ramp, which I thought was pretty cool because he could control that and he was using his own body to do it. So we are very flexible. The sport of bocce itself is one that we can really accommodate the needs of pretty much any athlete who wants to play. So if you need any creative ideas or have any questions about this, again, just let me know. That's what I'm here for. Divisioning. So a qualifying score needs to be reported for each player, including your unified partners. Um, it's completed by doing the player assessment for divisioning and make sure that you inform your area's GMS manager so it can be properly recorded in GMS. I always recommend sending your list to your area's GMS manager and then having them send you a list back of what they put in just to check for errors. I know we're all human, so sometimes we type in the wrong things. Um, and that actually we're gonna come down a little bit more um, to talk about player assessments. But before that, the winning score. So a modification that we do at Special Olympics Maryland is we have two ways that a team can win. The first one is that a player team earns their prescribed number of points, um, which is 12 points for singles and doubles and 16 points for team, or the predetermined time limit has expired. Traditionally, the time limit that we use is 30 minutes. However, we have found that at summer games, it's a lot easier for us to drop down to 25 minutes. We can fit more games in a day. and The athletes aren't as worn out. Um, so that is most likely something we will continue to do at summer games. Another modification that we have made through Special Olympics is that in the event that one player on a team or a doubles squad has scratched and no alternate can be activated, that team or doubles squad may compete with the existing players minus the balls of the absent player. So if you have a doubles pair and your one athlete can't do it, the other athlete is still able to. They are just going to roll only the two balls. Same goes with the four-person team. If you have one of your team members who's unable to play, then those three will only be able to roll three balls, but they can still play. And I know it seems kind of unfair, but really you can still win a bocce game that way. It's all about strategy. Um, so this just continues to allow your team to not have to totally scratch out. Um, for timeouts, we will not afford a timeout unless there is an injury or an illness. So if that happens, if you're at a local competition, just flag down someone um, from that county or at summer games, let the official on your court know, and we will send someone over there immediately. For attire, um, long pants or shorts are appropriate. Please no jeans, running shorts or short shorts. Athletic shoes that do not damage or harm the playing surface are required. Um, hats are permissible. And honestly, I highly recommend that you encourage your team to wear hats. I know Montgomery County, you guys have those awesome straw sun hats. It gets really hot out on the bocce court and it is a long day. So making sure that your athletes are have the best sun protection is really great to do. Um, collared shirts are required for competition. It's been this way since 2012. And I'm going to jump into Supplement B, which is the divisioning or assessment score process. Um, for any new coaches or any returning coaches who may be a little bit unsure about this process, I will be sending this out in addition to the slides and the link to the recording. On um, that way, you have it for once your season starts and you're beginning to do assessments. You can just utilize this sheet. Um, I also recommend doing it in an Excel document. Rennie Springle last year sent out uh, an Excel sheet that he has used for his team. Um, so if anyone is interested in seeing that as reference, please just let me know and I can most definitely share it with you. So for the assessment score process, your player is gonna roll or toss all eight bocce balls to three different spots. So at the 30 foot line, the 40 foot line, and the 50 foot line. Um, all of your distances need to be entered into inches only. Um, and if it's a fraction of an inch, just round up to the nearest inch. So the 
individual who's getting assessed, it's going to start with the Polina placed on the 30 foot line, always in the center. They're going to roll all eight of their balls and the three closest balls to the Polina are going to be measured. Um, same goes from the 40 foot line and on the 50 foot line. Here's just a diagram that shows exactly where they're going to be throwing from to spot one, spot two, and spot three. So their final measurement is going to be the total of all nine measurements. That is what you're going to submit to the area GMS leader that you have. Um, if you have courts that you are able to take apart, this is a great way to help as many athletes as possible get through this assessment process. I know it can take some time, um, especially if you have a really large bocce team. But if you separate your courts into two horseshoe shapes, you can just put a foot fault line either in paint or tape on the ground um, far enough behind, and then you can roll that way. So you can essentially get two out of what you had with just one. All right, so that is all I have for the assessments. Um, I will also send out a copy of the rules. So we did have a rule change in 2018. We eliminated the rule that says that once a player has registered to substitute for one team during the tournament, they may not substitute for any other team. Um, and also it says that substitutes should have a divisioning score equal to higher than the person they're substituting. So all of that is eliminated. Um, you are still able to have substitutions. There is just not the limitations on it. All right, my PowerPoint. Oh, there we go. All right, so additional resources. So again, check out our coaches resource page. It's really a great thing. It has the rules, coaching guides, um, different videos, everything that you could really need for your bocce season. And if there is something that you think should be included on this and you're not sure why it isn't, please let me know. We're trying to make these sites as useful for you guys as possible. Um, so the more that we can add to it, the better. If you have questions on any of the other summer game sports, um, these are the people that you will contact. So Zach Centurion is in charge of swimming. I am not just in charge of bocce this year, I'm also in charge of athletics. So if you have any athletics questions pop up, I am your girl. If you have questions on softball cheerleading, you'll contact Melissa Anger and then Steve Bennett is the general operations of summer games. So I know we moved through the material pretty quickly tonight. Um, I just wanted to make sure that I'm conscious of the time that you guys are taking up on this Tuesday evening. The last 10 to 15 slides are just the reference slides of registration forms and procedures. Um, I never feel the need to really go over them in depth. You can skim through. It just shows you what our medical and application for participation looks like, as well as some volunteer forms and all that fun stuff. Um, so I will open up the floor to any questions that we may have. You can either raise your hand or type a question into the question box if you have any that you can think of. All right, I don't see, oh, Annette, let me unmute your line for you. All right, Annette, you should be um, good to go. Well, of course I'm gonna have a question, Kendall. <laughs> I needed some questions. It was too easy tonight. <laughs> um, if we're going to do a unified team, do we have to have two unified partners and two athletes? Correct. Okay. Just checking. That's all I had. <laughs> all right. Thanks, Annette. Does anybody yeah. else have any questions? Oh. Um, from Frederick, so you actually haven't typed in your PIN, so I'm unable to mute, unmute your line. If you want to type your question into the questions pane, um, you can do that, or you can always just email me at Ashton, that is fine too. Um, in the meantime, Steve Bennett, I saw that your hand is raised, so your line is unmuted, Steve. Thank you, Kendall. Um, Mike, I just wanted to give you a reminder in re in regards to the medical forms, if you wanted to stress the importance of using the updated medical form, as I know we have had um, some individual uh, uh, older medical forms submitted. So, Mike, I don't know if you're hearing that or not. Um, sure, yes. I'd like to stress that you use the updated medical form. 
since we've had some medical submitted that are the old version. Um, in all seriousness, we can only accept the medical form that looks like this. Um, we have recently gotten some of the older ones uh, that were, I think, two or three pages and such. If you send them in, your athlete can't participate. Sorry, it's only this form um, as the core. Uh, there, there's changes in it that are that are essential. Similarly, for the volunteer application, um, there's a new uh, version of that. It's it's two pages. There's a single waiver uh, signature that they need to they need to provide. That again, also we can't take the old form. Uh, we can only accept this new form um, uh, for uh, for the waivers and or for the uh, uh, applications. That said, if someone has one of the older forms already on file and it's still valid through Summer Games, that's fine. You don't need to replace it. It's in terms of things that forms that we're taking um, uh, or, or accepting uh, going forward. And this change was back in uh, occurred back in 16, 2016. So you should all be uh, uh, and your area should all be on board with that. Just these uh, these old forms seem to pop up uh, out of the blue. And unfortunately, we cannot, absolutely cannot accept them. Thanks. Awesome. Thank you, Mike and Steve. And Renny, I believe your hand is in. So I just want to leave your line. You are self muted. So if you unmute your computer, you will be able to speak to the group. Hey, Rennie, if you are trying to speak, you are still on mute. All right, last call for any questions, comments, concerns about the 2019 Maki season. I'm really excited about this one. I think it's going to be our best Bocce season yet. I know we have Hartford and Lower Shore coming back this year, which is fantastic, and we're excited for that. Mike Sanders from Anne Arundel, I see you have your hand raised, so your line is unmuted, Mike. Okay. Uh, just a question on the uh, 30 or the half court Bocce. I was a little confused about the three attempt rule. It said something about a 40 foot line, and you've only got 30 feet. Are you, does that mean 10 feet from the, the foul line? Yes. Yep. Okay. Let me pull up the diagram to make it a little bit. Um, and all these different diagrams, it's hard to keep them straight. All right. So it will be placed, yeah, the 40 um, feet from the throwing line in the center of the court, equidistant from each sideline. But you're saying 40 so, feet right. from the, the back, the out of play line. Yes, or 40 okay. feet from the end line. Okay. Yeah, we, we might not have any, but I just wanted to understand what that rule was about the three three attempt rule. Thank you. Oh, definitely. Yeah, I know we only have a few athletes, but, and if anyone has any further questions on either half court bocce or ramps, um, just because I know that they aren't what we always use. Um, just send me an email and I can address all of your questions. Anybody else have a question at this time? If not, I will end tonight's webinar. Um, like I said, I'll make sure to send out all this information to you guys tomorrow. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy Tuesday evening. And I look forward to seeing you all at the first conversation. Have a great night.